So the CEO of OpenAI, which created ChatGPT, Sam Altman, was just on the Lex Freeman podcast. I personally loved every minute of it. I'm a big fan of Sam Altman. I like how he said he was going to spend a lot of time in the coming months going around trying to talk to users. I think it's important if you have time to try to learn how some of these CEOs think because so few companies can actually train models this big, this expensive, and have this much influence over the direction of AI at an early stage. He talks about the difficulty not in training the models in the first place, but taking the feedback from users and figuring out, do we actually want all the input of all of society impacting this, or are there ways to balance it out to make a more fair AI in the long run? And if so, how do we weight different people's opinions and feedback? He talks about how it's healthy to be a bit nervous and skeptical. So he paints a picture for a future where there's multiple AGIs. That's his hope, that these big companies have artificial general intelligence running in kind of different isolated systems that can sort of help guide and have different parameters and sort of balance each other out. And that we also have to accept the fact that there will be amazingly powerful models that will have no restrictions and they will be in regular people's hands. And hopefully if they try to do nefarious things with it that are better angels will just come out in society and will keep ways to stay on top of that sort of thing. He also addressed something I wasn't aware of, which was the actual structure of the company. I knew it went from nonprofit to private, but there's still a cap on how much money investors could ever get back. And there's still a nonprofit that sits on top of the actual company. So it was a great structure. I was actually made me like the company a bit more. Oh my gosh, as if there wasn't enough chat GPT news breaking every single day. Now ChatGPT has an app store. So it's technically just called plugins and it's only available to a select number of people, but you can see where this is going. And where it's going is going to be big. With the developer floodgates open, people are gonna be innovating at a rapid pace and we're probably gonna be working quite a bit of overtime to keep up with it, but that's great because this is an exciting industry to be part of. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm expecting a similar explosion to the same type of monumental software changes when Apple introduced the App Store. You saw how that just changed everything for them. And normally something like this would need to attach into a platform that like Apple would own or Android, but this is just so monumental. It's almost its own operating system. And to develop an app store on top of it and to have Microsoft willing to kind of keep them funded, but also separate in their own entity, it's like, it's a crazy moment. But the fact is, ChatGPT can now access third party resources, databases, and the internet. Actually scratch that, it can't just access, it can also interact on behalf of the user. And that means a flood of developers are gonna allow this large language model into their ecosystems to help make decisions on behalf of the users. That'll change a lot. Tech will never be the same. So chat GPT plugins have arrived. Let's look at some of the initial rollout partners. Expedia means that chat GPT can not just help you with your vacation itinerary, but probably buy your tickets and do all of those boring logistics. So fiscal note means that it has access to legal, political, and regulatory data. Instacart means groceries. Yo chat GPT, more soy milk. Kayak, more itinerary, flights, car rentals. Klarna, which I haven't heard of before, but it compares prices for online shopping. Open table, chat GPT, book me a reservation. And my favorite one is Wolfram Computation. And I could have called this one because I have been seeing Stephen Wolfram talking about how GPT works. In one video, he laid out all of how ChatGPT is constructed and does its thinking. And like, I don't know, I just somehow, I just knew he'd be in on this. But their computation engine is incredible and their curated data sets are unbelievable. So asking real world questions, solving real world engineering problems. And finally, the one that's most talked about, Zapier. And that's most talked about because that in itself is a hub. Like, that, if that was ChatGPT, it would already have instant access to over 500 APIs. So by proxy, it's like ChatGPT, Zapier, everybody. ChatGPT is no longer constrained to 2021 because it is now current and on the internet. Bing and Bard are now on notice. So not everybody has access yet, and it's limited a bit in the scope of how it can interact with the internet. So as a web plugin, it makes a great companion app. Still navigate the traditional way, but ChatGPT has access to what you're looking at. And now it can also cite its sources and deliver where the ChatGPT result delivered its response from. But of course, that's not all. It's also able to synthesize information across multiple sources. But because of the new plugin system, don't forget it can actually reference other APIs too. So it can double check information, say, with the Wolfram data set and say, does this feel like it fits the truth that I'm getting from this web page? Now, if you're wondering why they didn't just open it up to the web like completely, 
it's because they thought it would be more secure this way. So because ChatGPT is prone to, you know, hallucinating facts, they wanted to contain it inside the plugin, give it some parameters to stay in, and that should help the results feel more trustworthy. <laughs> So part of OpenAI's plugin announcement was a new code interpreter for ChatGPT. And it's unlike anything else out there because it basically allows you to build a working program without needing to code. Now what it does require is a general understanding of how Python works, some packages you could pull in, and a sort of logical way of speaking to the computer so it actually knows what you want. But that's it. So check out this reaction from an experienced plugin developer working with the code interpreter for the first time. I've developed a lot of plugin systems and the OpenAI ChatGPT plugin interface might be the damn craziest and most impressive approach that I have ever seen in computing my entire life. And then he follows up with, for those of you that aren't aware, you write an OpenAI manifest for your API, which is a human language description for everything, and that's it. You let the model, the large language model, GPT-4 in this case, figure out how to authenticate, chain calls, process data in between, format it for viewing, etc. There's absolutely zero glue code. So part of OpenAI's plugin announcement was a new code interpreter for ChatGPT, and it's unlike anything else out there. Let's look at this blog post from Andrew Main. It's about the ChatGPT plugin and how when you build inside the code interpreter, you can do it with natural language instead of technical coding skills. So without the technical side, he was able to do impressive things like asking it to generate a tone where it actually went, generated the Python, found out what package that actually does stuff like that and made it happen. He had to generate a simple program for Conway's Game of Life where simple things become much more complicated when repeated. He got it to generate QR codes. He got Python to pull in a package called OpenCV which allows facial recognition and facial detection. He got it to convert images to ASCII art, a rotating cube, optical character recognition, taking a photograph and pulling the text out of it, a bunch of cat stuff, and topped it all off with a Pac-Man simulator. ChatGPT plus your imagination, that's all you need. So we do have a chat gate post-mortem. So the chat GPT bug, which exposed names, email addresses, payment addresses, and the last four digits of credit card numbers and expiration dates to a very small 1.2% of chat GPT plus subscribers for a very specific nine hour window on March 20th, but it's patched now. They reached out to the users that were affected and there's no more risk. So the bug came from the Redis client library, which ChatGPT uses for caching user information. 